As the movie starts, there's this guy on a horse-drawn carriage, trying to go through these super snowy mountains. Out of nowhere, this tough ex-military guy named Marcus Warren shows up, and he stops the carriage. Warren tells everyone that he's heading to Retro City, and he's got a dead criminal with him. Retro City is this place where they put all the bad guys who got caught and punished. If you bring a bad guy there, you get money for it. But things get crazy when Warren's horse just dies in the freezing weather, and he's stuck. He's pretty desperate for a ride, so he asks the carriage driver for a lift, but the driver says he needs to get permission from John Ruth, the owner of the carriage, first. Coincidentally, John Ruth, the guy who owns the carriage, was also carrying a valuable female criminal named Daisy Domerg, and she was worth a lot of money, $10,000. Now, Marcus Warren wanted to be super clear that he wasn't planning to steal John's criminal because she was only worth a bit more than his own, which was $8,000. So John agreed to let him ride along, but he had to give up all his weapons to the driver. As they kept going through the crazy storm, the driver was pushing the horses, and Warren was all proud, showing him off a letter he claimed was from President Abraham Lincoln himself. But it turns out that letter was just something he made up. To make things worse, when John showed it to Daisy, she spat on it, which really got on Warren's nerves. So he got super mad and attacked Daisy. They ended up in a fight, and both Daisy and John got tossed out of the carriage with their hands tied together. Warren got off too, looking for his made-up letter. As they kept going through the really bad storm, the driver saw someone far off, and John got worried it might be one of Warren's friends. So he told Warren to put on handcuffs, just to be safe. But as they got closer, they realized it was actually John's buddy, Chris Mannix, who was a sheriff from a nearby town. It turned out that they were all headed the same way, and Chris wanted to ride with them. Chris said he was going to Retro City to be the new sheriff there and keep things in order. But at first, John didn't trust him much, so he said Chris had to wear handcuffs like Warren if he wanted a ride in the carriage. Chris got real mad and said he was too proud to do that, and he even said John would be responsible if he got stuck in the storm without a ride. So, even though John didn't like it, he let Chris join them without the handcuffs. When they were all on the carriage, John still didn't fully trust Warren, so he thought it might be a good idea for them to team up and look out for each other since they both had criminals to take care of. As they went through the snowy area, a big storm was coming, so they decided to stop at a bar to take a break. When they got there, a nice guy named Bob welcomed them. John and Daisy went into the bar, while Chris and Warren helped Bob take care of the horses in the stable. Inside the bar, they met three other folks, Oswaldo Mowbray, who was known for executing people, General Smither, who was a retired military guy, and Joe Gage, just a regular guy going to Retro to see his mom. They all said hello and talked a bit. John told everyone about Warren's story of the letter from President Abraham Lincoln, but Chris didn't really believe it. He wondered how the president could send a letter to someone like Warren, who was black. Warren, Bob, and General Smither took their horses to the stable. Warren remembered General Smither from the war, and he really hated the guy because Smither had killed a lot of black soldiers. Smither started saying racist stuff to Warren, making things worse. Then, Oswaldo came up with a smart idea. He split the people in the bar into two groups, one pretending to be from the north and the other from the south. They even set up a table in the middle for anyone who wanted to stay neutral trying to calm things down. Once things settled down, John asked Warren to chat about their plan to team up. While they talked, John started getting suspicious that there might be a gang of criminals, led by a lady named Daisy, hiding among the folks in the bar. To make sure everyone was safe, John and Warren asked everyone to give up their weapons, which they threw away in a nearby trash can. While they all had a meal together, they talked about Warren's letter, the one he said was from President Abraham Lincoln. But in the end, Warren admitted it was a fake. He made it up to get respect because people often insulted him for being black. John was pretty disappointed when he heard that. After they ate, Warren went over to talk to General Smither, who was sitting by himself. While they were chatting, Warren brought up the topic of Smither's missing son and claimed he had killed him in a really painful way. Then, Warren put a gun next to Smither and dared him to try and shoot him. In self-defense, Warren ended up shooting and killing Smither. All the people who saw what happened said that Smither was the one who started it, so Warren didn't get in trouble for murder. 
But while everyone was busy with that, someone sneaked in and put poison in the coffee pot. Gage and the driver had to carry Smithers' body out of the bar. Inside the bar, Oswaldo and Chris lit some candles, Bob sat quietly, and John kept an eye on the door. To pass the time, Daisy asked John if she could play the guitar. But things got really bad when Daisy sang a scary song that threatened to hurt John. He got super mad, smashed the guitar, and put handcuffs on Daisy. But things got really crazy when John suddenly started puking blood, and the driver, who also drank the poisoned coffee, did the same. Daisy was secretly happy because her plan to poison John had worked. Even though John was really weak, he tried to attack Daisy, but she managed to grab his gun and shoot him, and he died. Amid all the craziness, Warren jumped into action and pointed his gun at Daisy, taking her weapon too. He made everyone turn and face the wall, and then started asking them questions one by one to figure out who poisoned John. Warren was pretty sure Chris had nothing to do with Daisy's plan, so he gave Chris the gun. He figured that Daisy's gang probably wanted to kill John and set Daisy free, but things didn't go their way when Warren and Chris unexpectedly got on John's carriage. While Warren was questioning everyone, he got suspicious of Bob, who was acting like he was the barkeeper. Warren noticed some things didn't add up, like the taste of the food, and he thought Daisy's gang had already killed the real barkeepers. His suspicions were confirmed when he found blood on Dave's favorite chair. Warren didn't waste any time. He shot Bob and made Oswaldo and Gage admit who poisoned the coffee. Gage finally confessed, and Chris was really mad that he almost got poisoned. He asked Warren if he could kill Gage, but then there was a gunshot from under the floor, and it stopped them. Now let's go back in time a bit to the day before all this mess. Four guys, Oswaldo, Bob, Gage, and Jody, came to Minnie and Dave's bar, acting like regular passengers on a horse-drawn carriage but the real plan was to free Daisy and kill everyone else. Minnie, the barkeeper, and the other people in the bar welcomed them in. They were all in the bar, sipping Minnie's coffee, waiting for John and Daisy to show up in their carriage. When it finally arrived, those four guys killed everyone in the bar, except for one old man, General Smither. They told him to stay quiet and not say anything so he could stay alive. Then, they got their weapons ready and waited for John and Daisy. Oswaldo, Bob, and Gage acted like they were just regular people in the bar, while Jotty hid under the floor. The room was super tense. Warren had been shot in the groin, Chris in the waist, and Oswaldo was seriously hurt. Things were bad. Warren and Chris threatened to shoot Daisy, and that's when Jody gave up and came out from under the floor. Daisy was happy to see her brother, but before they could celebrate, Warren shot Jody in the head, and Daisy was horrified. The gang's leader is gone, and everything they planned is a mess. Gage acts like he's looking for his gun, and Daisy tries to get Chris on their side by offering $12,000 for Bob's body and $15,000 for Oswaldo's head. Oswaldo, who's dying, adds that they can make $27,000 by just getting rid of Warren. While they're all talking super seriously, Chris suddenly suggests killing all of Jody's gang, even Daisy, to make more money. But Daisy warns him that there are 15 other gang members waiting in Retro Town, and if he tries to take her there, he won't make it out alive. As they keep talking, Warren loses his patience and kills the rest of Daisy's gang. Daisy has no choice but to give up. But when Warren tries to shoot her, his gun runs out of bullets. He asks Chris for his gun, but Chris doesn't give it to him. Instead, Chris walks over to Daisy and starts talking again. In the end, Chris can't resist the offer of $27,000. In the middle of their tense talk, Chris suddenly collapsed because of losing too much blood. Daisy tried to take off her handcuffs, but Chris woke up and shot her hand. Chris had had enough of Daisy and wanted to end her life right then, but Warren stopped him. He thought Daisy didn't deserve to be killed, and because they were all hurt, they might not make it back to Retro City anyway. Instead, Warren thought they should punish Daisy the way John wanted, by hanging her. He hoped Chris would help fulfill John's wish. When Chris heard this, he agreed, and with their last bit of energy, they hanged Daisy. As Daisy was taking her last breath, Chris and Warren were left with each other and a letter from President Abraham Lincoln. Even though Warren had actually written the letter himself, it meant a lot to both of them. In their final moments, they read the letter together and found some comfort in its words. 
The movie teaches us an important lesson to think before we act and consider what might happen because of what we do and never rush into things because it can lead to a really complicated future.